Hey guys, welcome back to Predict the Restoration Tips. Now we're going to get into a meaty topic that I think is going to be of interest to a lot of you. And I put some thought about how to cover this topic. Initially I thought I'd cover it all in one video, but I think it would be better if we broke it up a little bit. What I'm going to be talking about is component selection, which is... Uh, I think the most challenging, or one of the most challenging parts of restoring a predicted television because essentially none of these parts are made anymore and haven't been made in a long time, so you need to find modern equivalents. And for some of these parts, that can be a little tricky. With In this video, I'm going to assume that the viewers know next to nothing. This is based on what I've seen in the forums on Facebook, Antique Radio Forum, Video Karma, and such that because of the appeal of these sets, I see a lot of folks that have never worked on a vintage TV before dive into one of these and it seems they have a lot of questions. So some of this may be boring to, to you guys because you know what a paper capacitor is and all that kind of stuff, but I figured if I'm going to make a dedicated video talking about component selection, I better go in deep and assume uh, the viewer has uh, limited experience. I also want to preface this by saying I am not, I do not sell kits of parts. Uh, I'm not going to provide you a bill of materials or a pre-filled order form for a few reasons. One, the supply chain is constantly evolving, not just because of shortages, but some parts are phased out. New parts get introduced. Uh, sometimes you have to go to more than one vendor to get what you need. Or typically I'm ordering parts for multiple projects, so I order up stuff. I combine things from different places. Anyways, it gets complicated. Also, I don't have all the answers. Um, and, and, there are the more, and there are more than one. There is more than one answer. Because, as I said, they don't make exact equivalent to these parts anymore. Uh, and for some of them, you have a variety of choices. So, depending on... Uh, who you're going to buy it from and how many you're going to order and, and such, your, your answer may vary from case to case. Now you may very well have been warned to never plug in an old set. Something very bad could happen, it could explode, it could burn your house down. That's a bit of an exaggeration, extremely unlikely. That being said, it's not a good idea unless you know what you're doing and you monitor things and you've got a current limiting device attached to it and you're keeping an eye on everything. If you've been watching my videos you've seen me power up sets when they come in. Do they ever produce a great picture and have great sound? No. But yes, you can check the major components so you can see if you can get the CRT to light up here, a crack will come out of the speaker. What is a distinct possibility, and as you've even seen it happen once or twice in my videos, is that something pops. Uh, there is a fuse in these. That typically will pop if it's drawing too much current. Uh, the thermistor could fail. Uh, one of the parts could fail. Uh, if an old capacitor has, has too much leakage current, and it's encased in plastic, these can explode, so to speak, pop. It can be a little uh, startling, but it's not going to harm you or really do any significant damage. But you may jump a little. Uh, a resistor may burn out and you get a puff of smoke come out of it. Yes, it is remotely possible you could burn out the flyback, burn out the yoke, or something like that. I've never had it happen to me. I really haven't heard it happen very often. But I'm not going to tell you that anything is impossible. Just, in my experience, it's unlikely. But I don't recommend you just plug it in and continue to watch it in whatever condition image you get. Uh, if you really want the set to work, well, and not have to worry about any of these parts going up in smoke, you really do need to replace them. Here's a parts list from a Philco factory service info. This is for the 9L37 chassis. That's what's used in the holiday and pedestal models. 
and they have several sections. All the parts up there with C are capacitors, N are resistor condenser networks, also known as couplets, it's also called K networks, and the R's are the resistors. So let's focus on those. Now on here, be a little confusing because they've combined, it looks like, the parts from um, well, they have this broken out by different parts of the set. So up top here it says main chassis. There will also be a section, I think, on the uh, IF board and the tuner. So this, in particular, this list applies to this. So it could be a little confusing if you say R1, well, you, R1 on what? On R1 on the main chassis, R1 on the circuit board. Also, there was more than one source of service info. Sam's Photo Fact also puts out service info. And unlike this, which came from Riders, I believe, and also floating around out there, there is the original Philco service info you might get your hands on. They use a different numbering system. So Sam's R1 is not the same as Philco's R1. So you need to be careful with that. I see people posing questions online, say, hey, what part should I use to replace R1? R1 where what <laughs> what part of the set and what parts list are you going off of all right let's take a closer look at that so for example R1 resistor tuner AGC load 3.3 mega ohms okay we know it's 3.3 mega ohms but what else resistors also have a wattage rating and what material is it made out of well Usually somewhere on here, they will state, I don't think they have in this case, because they're assuming you have some information that servicemen typically would, which is that if they don't specify, it's a half watt. And these resistors, generally speaking, are all carbon composition. If it's larger, it will say 1 watt, 2 watt, for example, R7. B plus bleeder, 18,000 ohm, 2 watt. So if you don't see any wattage, it's half watt. And if they don't specify wire wound or some other material, assume it's carbon composition. Well, that material, carbon composition, means what it says, that the composition is made of carbon. If you were to break open one of them, here's a, here's a 2 watt carbon comp. There's a black material inside, there's sort of a tube of it, and then there's this outer material encasing it, and they paint stripes on it that tells you the value and the tolerance. Carbon comp resistors vary with temperature a bit. Uh, I believe the resistance goes up as they get hot. Also, they tend to drift higher in value with age. I believe, at least the theory is that it's from moisture working its way in there and reacting with the carbon. Your mileage may vary. Um, my methodology, what I feel comfortable doing, and because I've worked on a lot of these sets and I go through a lot of them, is I replace them all on the circuit boards. They are a hassle to remove. It's a hassle to test the parts because sometimes when they're installed on the board because they are in parallel or with other parts you can't check them unless you remove one of the leads, get one of the legs out like it might be in parallel with an inductor for example uh, which will affect the resistance reading so you have to isolate it from the circuit to test it by the time I've taken out the board, lifted up one leg and tested it I could have just clipped it out and replaced it resistors cost pennies and what I typically replace them with is metal oxide or metal film. For example, this board's a little chewed up. Somebody had already started working on this. Um, I harvested this from a set that was beyond uh, restoring, but that is a new resistor. Notice it looks a bit different. And this is a metal oxide, I do believe. Metal oxide, metal film... They're similar, it's somewhat different manufacturing technology, but it basically comes down to a metal alloy that has a certain amount of resistance, and they're very temperature stable. Yeah, they have some other somewhat different characteristics in terms of their uh, 
inductance and capacitance, but generally speaking, the way these are used, where they are used, it's not going to be an issue whatsoever. You're fine using either one of them, and I recommend you use metal oxide or metal film. In particular, I like the Vichy series of um, PR01, 02, and 03 for 1, 2, and 3 watt resistors. I'll show you why I like them. I like them, one, they're readily available, inexpensive, and they look a lot like carbon comps, and they're easy to read the color bands on. Most modern resistors are blue in color. For example, these guys. Those bands are sometimes really hard to read. These guys are the Vichy series. Now, one of the problems is they only make them up to one mega ohm. So, for larger values, that's, that's a 15 mega ohm resistor. I had no choice to, but to go with uh, a different series. Likewise, it's a 2.2 meg. But generally speaking, that's what I use when I can. Readily available at Mauser, DigiKey, uh, etc. But by all means, go with whatever vendor you feel comfortable with. Everybody sells metal oxide and metal film resistors. Wattage-wise, I like to double it. So that's what I meant by earlier, by meeting or exceeding the specs. You can always go higher in wattage. That, that will not affect anything, except the resistor will run cooler, and heat is never good for electronics, be it vintage or modern. Heat is bad. Larger means more surface area to dissipate the heat so the parts run cooler. And honestly, that PR series, they don't, I don't think they make half watt. So these little guys are actually one watt resistors, but they're actually physically smaller than the original half watt resistors. These are two watt. And I don't think I have an example of a three watt handy, but they are about twice that size. So all the half watts are replaced with one watt, all the one watt are replaced with two watt, and all the two watt are replaced with three watt. And because they're smaller, there's no issue whatsoever with fitting them on the board. Generally speaking, when I have gone to the trouble to test these resistors, I'd say about half of them are typically out of spec. Now, would that really make the set not work? No. Uh, I have had sets where a resistor was completely open, which drastically affected their performance, but the set still turned on and produced a raster. Um, but, again, uh, once you have the board out and you're working on it, uh, if you want to go through and check every single resistor before replacing it, knock yourself out, but I don't think it's worth the effort. All right, so that covers the carbon comps, the ones that you typically find on the board. But there are some that are larger. For example, in the chassis here, we have one I think that's a 7 watt. These are wire wound. These are far more reliable. Uh, they don't drift in value because they're made out of a type of wire that has a resistance um, that's fixed. Um, a certain amount of ohms per inch, and they wrap it around a ceramic core. Generally, if it uh, is okay by that I mean they they can fail if there's too much current that goes through it they can burn open or sometimes they corrode and you'll see green oxidation on the ends if it tests good and there's no oxidation like this one looks perfectly fine it tests fine I'll leave it alone otherwise these are readily available I would go up a little bit higher like if this is a 7 watt maybe get a 10 watt but I wouldn't double it because they're going to get pretty darn big and uh, they do get pretty pricey you could be looking at five bucks or more for say a 10 watt high quality resistor there are cheapo ones uh, called cement capacitor or sorry cement resistors i'm not crazy about them these are the cheapies these are cement type filled ones these are fairly inexpensive uh, but I don't like these for a couple of reasons. One, these are the type that tend to get that corrosion on the ends. But also the leads, at least on the modern ones, these are really flimsy. This thing's kind of heavy. 
and it just has these kind of dinky leads on it. Uh, I don't feel like it's mounted as, like, this is on there really solid. These leads, the gauge on this is probably two, three times what it is on this. I prefer these guys. Vitreous enamel, nice sturdy leads made by Omite. Or this one is Dale. Um, some type of uh, silicone synthetic coating on this. Uh, they will cost considerably more, but uh, much higher quality, in my opinion. Now, there is something else to take into consideration on these resistors, and that is the tolerance. That is the last band on these carbon comps, for example. So this guy right here, it's the one on the right. It's silver. Most of them will be silver. That means 10%. If it's gold, it's 5%. If there's no band, it's 20%. What does that mean? It means the value should be within that range. So if it's a 10K, 10% resistor, it should be plus minus 10%. So basically between 9K and 11K would be acceptable. Uh, all the new ones I use, they're all 5%. So it's just really not something I have to think about. Some of the bluish ones, the metal film ones, are 1%. And they still make them in the same values that they did back then. So you should have no trouble finding the exact values for the carbon comps. The power resistors may be a little trickier. For example, I believe this one originally was 4.1k or 3.9 I don't remember exactly but the only modern one I could find that was that wattage or better was 4k which is pretty close no it's not exact but it's within 10 percent for sure Generally, though, uh, I haven't had any trouble. For example, this was a 3K resistor, 7 watt. I found a 3K, 10 watt vitreous enamel. So I don't think you'll have too much trouble matching the values. Worst case scenario, you could always combine a couple, either in series or parallel, to get the value you need. Just be careful of the wattage rating that you. Uh, maintain it. So let's say for example I couldn't find a 3000 ohm resistor but I could find two 1500 ohm resistors and I wanted the value the wattage to be 10 watts or better. Since each resistor is the same value the wattage will divide evenly between them so they should both be 5 watt or better and then as a combined unit you'll get your 10 watts or better. Similarly, if they're in parallel and they're the same value, the power will also divide evenly between them. So, say for example, I would find a 6,000 ohm resistor at 5 watts. I could use two of them in parallel, in which case the resistance would be cut in half to 3,000, but the wattage would still be divided evenly between them. But I don't think you'll need to go there. There aren't any really bizarre component values on these boards. So, to recap... Metal film or metal oxide, 5% or better, and double approximately the wattage. Use 1 watt for half watt, 2 watt for 1 watt, 3 watt for 2 watt. They don't make 4 watt resistors commonly, so go with 3. Uh, I like the Vichy series, that's what you see on this board. There's a 3 watt, there's a 2 watt, uh, there is a 1 watt. They only make them up to 1 meg, so higher than 1 meg I go with whatever I can find. <laughs> uh, usually I can find metal film. Occasionally I'll use carbon film, which is pretty good, uh, but it's not quite as good as metal film. It does drift a little with temperature, but carbon film is better than carbon comp, generally speaking, so you could go with that as well. And for the wire wound, I would meet or exceed the wattage if you determine you do want to replace it. And I like to go with either vitreous enamel or silicon coated. Uh, I hope that made some sense. In uh, an upcoming installment, we're going to talk about this guy, these guys, and these guys. Thanks for watching.